according to his divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Promises that that by these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add unto your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For these are the things, for these things speak in you and abound. They make you, they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord have a blessing and a year to his word. Program 
Madam Chairperson, Mr. Sheila Griffith, Church Clerk and Secretary, Mr. Murray Pierce Wharton, Assistant Church Clerk uh, and Secretary, Mr. Shirley Connie, Financial Clerk and Secretary, Mr. Deborah Roberts, Treasurer, Trustee Serena Cupcake Washington. <coughs> Excuse me. There will be a joint virtual Thanksgiving service with Baptist Baptist Church and Brooklyn Baptist Church. For more, informa more information will be coming soon. Also, please note there will not be a live choir this year. The women's ministry will once again host their annual community service to the homeless community. Hats and gloves for both men and women may be donated. The donation cutoff is December the 11th, 2022, where distributions will be on December the 18th, 2022. This concludes our announcements. We would now have a selection of praise melody.
Because we still holding it down, keeping the lights on, keeping the doors open, and keeping the praises going up. We thank God again for everybody that's in the building. We thank God for those that are worshiping with us virtually. Amen. We got friends from all over the place. We got people sometimes that tune in from Nigeria. Amen. Yeah, we, yeah. We, just thank, we say hello to you Nigerians this morning. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello to you. Amen. We say hello to you no matter where you are this yeah. morning. Tune in. We praise God for you. And we pray that you feel that same presence, that same spirit of God. Enter into the service. Amen. Amen. Take time Amen. for what you do. Don't let this be an afterthought. Amen. But let this be on the forefront of your mind, giving yeah. the glory, the honor, and the praise unto God. Because I'm here to tell you that when you enter in, God will pour something in you. Yeah. Come on, yeah. yeah. come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God today. We're excited for each and every one of you. You heard the announcements. Please, please double yourselves accordingly. Amen. We just thank God for what God, God is doing in the life of the church. The children were out on yesterday. Amen. amen. Knocking on doors, hanging door knockers, ministering. Amen. Witnessing passing in the neighborhood. I was so proud of that. Wow. Amen. Amen. Y'all there. Because I heard a report that we had a good time. Ah, all right. Amen. Amen. And that was one of the children that said that. So we just thank God for that. That we're out there enjoying the Lord and enjoying sharing with, with others the joy of the Lord that we have. Amen. And we praise God for his life. Amen. For his light and his blessings. All that he continue to pour upon us. We just thank God today. Me and this might have a time. Amen. Amen. But we just thank God today for what God is doing, what God is going to continue to do. I'm excited for you, and I just know God is getting ready to bless you real yeah, good. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah, is the God. thankful season that yeah, the world calls it. It's November. It's coming down on, on, on Thanksgiving, but we always thankful. Then it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We always thankful. Amen. Amen. We have so much to thank God for, so much that, that could have been the other way, so yeah, much that could have turned out thank differently. You. Amen. But God's hand is of mercy. Yeah, is always you. present in our lives, and we thank God for that. And I just encourage you today to keep on being thankful. Keep on That's being right. grateful. Keep That's on right. telling God That's how right. much you love him, how much you thank him for everything. He never gets tired of hearing you mm. call on his name to thank him and to praise him. He doesn't get tired of hearing us ask for things. He doesn't get tired of hearing us pray up to him. But he definitely never gets tired of hearing us thank be thankful in yeah. all things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was 
Our God is holy, amen. Yes, yes. 
we we are that are created in God's own image, which is all of us. Amen. 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 If God is God for us, it's for us to be holy too. Amen. 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 There's something about holiness, amen. amen. Something about the holiness, the peace, amen, the joy, the power, the strength. Amen. amen. Something about holiness, amen, that makes a difference in your life. And I tell you, holiness show up, amen, in the darkest of times, amen, amen. in the best of times. Holiness shows up when, when nobody else will show up. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Holiness yeah. will show up. Amen. And show yeah. out in your life. Amen. You never like from holiness. Amen. The enemy knows. Amen. The enemy knows. Amen. Who you are and what you are about. Amen. He may try you. He may try you. Amen. He may come against you. Amen. But the holiness in you, which is God's presence, God's spirit, amen, will raise up a standard against him. Somebody need to get there. Amen. The holiness will raise up a standard against him. Amen. Against the enemy, against the evil one. Amen. And not only protect you, amen, shelter you, cover you, amen, but lead you on to victory. Come on, somebody. I want the victory, amen. I want the healing, amen. I want the blessings of God. But can I tell you, amen, the blessings of God, the healings of God, amen, the power of God, it come along with his holiness. Holiness, amen, is what I want. Holiness is who I want to be, amen. Yeah. Holiness is not a name on the door, amen. It's a condition of your heart. Somebody need to get that. Somebody need to get that. It's a condition of your heart. The condition of your relationship. I want my relationship with the Lord to be as strong as it can be. Amen. The Bible lets us know how can two walk together unless they agree. But God has already God has already proclaimed, amen, and God already has a standard that I am holy. God is God's standard is that you be holy as I am holy. Amen. If I'm not holy with the Lord, I can't agree with him. I can't walk with him. Amen. Amen. He'll still talk to me, amen, but I can't be as close as I want to be. How many of y'all want to be closer to the Lord? Amen. Oh, God, I thank you, God. You see, you see, in the intimacy of knowing, in the intimacy of knowing our, our God, amen. In the relationship of knowing our God, oh, it is the blessings of God, it is the favor of God, it is the boldness of God, amen. It is the manifestations of God. Come on, come on, somebody. When Moses was on top of the mountain, Moses was as close to God as he ever would be until he got to heaven, amen. And he saw the glory and the lightning and the thunder of God, the power of God. But those that were below, all they saw was black smoke. That's what they saw. They were terrified because all they saw was black smoke. They didn't know. They didn't know the beauty that was going on. Amen. In the in the inner circle of God. Come on, somebody. See, folk look at you. Amen. Come on, let me help somebody right now. Folk look at you. Amen. And don't understand. Amen. They see strife. They see turmoil. They see ups and downs of life. They see you going through. But they don't understand that when you walk in the holiness of God, then you walk in the glory of God. And when you might see me down here struggling and strife. You might see me down here going through pain and bereavement. You might see me down here with a broken heart all the way. But when I look at my God, amen, I see his presence. I I see his holiness. I see his glory. I see his comfort. I see his deliverance. I see his power. I see him face to face. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right now. I have been marveling at God for what God has been doing in some of these quick moments, amen, before we preach this. I have been marveling, and, and, and one day I'm going to have the technology and, I, and the understanding how to go back to each of these messages and find those innermost parts where God has been speaking. Somebody better get that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is speaking beyond. Yeah. God is speaking outside even up. Of the message, amen. Uh, the message is going to be good, amen. But, but God is beginning to also speak outside of that. And one day, God's going to speak that. To, that's going to be the message, amen. What God is speaking. Come on, somebody, right now. Right now, God is giving us some tidbits. God is, God, God is increasing our palate, amen. Yeah. See, yeah. palate is a fancy word that go and chefs and diners and, and restaurants use. They want to cleanse your palate. They want to expand your palate so you'll be able to eat rich and good stuff uh, and be able to digest it. But if you ain't used to that, uh, you got to get used to it. So that's what God, that's what God is showing me. God is saying I'm, that I'm giving them bits and snippets, amen, of my intermost thoughts. Bits and snippets. So, one, you'll get used to hearing it and be ready to receive it. But then the other thing is for you to hunger and thirst after more of it. 
But if you hunger and thirst like the Lord, let you find revelation and confirmation from the Lord. Guess what God's going to do? God's going to fill that need. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Amen. God said, we ain't ready for that yet, man. Come on. God said, we, we get ready. Oh, I love it. Look, let me tell y'all this. I thank God for the remnant. I look out here and I see the remnant. I see the remnant, amen. It's going to be more people than this here soon and later. It's going to be, church going to be running over again soon, very soon. But I thank God for the remnant. I thank God for the few. You know, the Bible talks about, amen, the remnant, amen. We call it the faithful few, amen. For whatever reason, if you're not here today, that don't mean you ain't part of the faithful. I'm not saying that. But I'm just looking out at this, at this snapshot in time, and I see the faithful few. And I cannot tell you what, what God does with the few. The few is not your harvest. The few is your seed. Amen. The few is not your harvest. The few is your seed. Amen. And I just see the, I just see the faithful few turning into a mighty harvest. Amen. See, see, harvest don't turn into seeds. Seeds turn into harvest. Oh, somebody need to get there. Harvest, the harvest may produce the seed and you can use the seed, but, but harvest don't turn into seeds. Seeds turn into harvest. So you got to have a small beginning. So, well, y'all know how I feel about that small beginning. Amen. The Bible tells me, despise not the small beginning. But I love to see a thing that started. Amen. So I'm not despising the small beginning. Matter of fact, I'm excited about the small beginning. Because I know what's coming after the small beginning. Come on, come, come on somebody give God some praise. Somebody, somebody take that word with you this week. Somebody take that word with you this week. Despise not the small beginning. Be giddy about the small beginning. Amen. Amen. Be giddy about the small beginning. You can get your laugh on. Amen. You can get your praise on at the time of the small beginning. Why? Because you're praising God for the harvest that is yet to come. Come on. Come on. See all this? See all this? See all this is God listening. God is speaking. Every now and then, if you walk with him, God, God will just tell you some stuff. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on. Let's give God some glory right there. I think it's God's glory. Amen. There is another word, amen, that God got for us today. There is another word, amen. Let me say this too. Let's thank God for our worship leader today. Come on, come on, come on. Let's thank God for our worship leader. Amen, amen, amen. My right hand spiritual, spiritual cohort. Amen, amen. My, my chairperson of the deacon ministry, amen, amen, amen. She ain't shy as you were supposed, amen. Amen, God, to keep that quiet. You need that quietness runs a mighty raging river of power and anointing and prayer. Amen. 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 And I thank God for that. Amen. Go ahead and smile for the name. Amen. 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 I thank God for that. Amen. She know how to, just how to pray. Amen. And the deep truth there. If you, if you didn't touch my heart today, amen. 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 The truth there. If you didn't touch my heart today. Amen. Amen. And your pastor got to apologize to me because I heard that. And it didn't click to me when I heard it, amen, about your sister. Amen. It did not click. And, 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 and I apologize for that. I apologize. You have to better than that. Amen. Amen. And I apologize for that. And that sometimes you might have to shake me and, and, to, and to show me some stuff. Sometimes I'll be focused on so many other things. But that's no excuse. But, I, but, but your spirit touched me today. Amen. Your spirit touched me today. Come on. Thank you. Amen. 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 We lift you up to God. Amen. You are treasure, God. You are a treasure unto God for what you've been doing, what you've been dealing with, what you've been going through. You are a treasure unto God for your tender spirit. Can I tell you, can I tell you, when you are a treasure to God like you are, when you are a treasure to God like you are, it ain't going to be long before the world see how treasurable you are. It, 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 the treasure within is the treasure within. The Bible lets us know that we got this treasure inside these earthen vessels, and, and ain't nobody perfect. Everybody don't walk the. 
the stuff you told me to did this or that, but that's still a treasure, amen. And your treasure ain't being seen to God. God knows your treasure. God is like God is like the um, art collector, amen, that's walking through the pawn shop. God is like the art collector that's walking past the junk pile, amen. And he see what other folk don't see. Amen. Amen. God see that treasure within. And can I tell you, when God pluck you, amen, when God pluck you, amen, when God, when God pluck you, amen, when God rescue you from that situation, when God pull you out of that situation, God see the pure gold within you. Come on, somebody. God see the pure gold within you. And the value that, that God put in there from the beginning, the world going to know. And when the world begin to know, now, now, now your testimony going to carry even more weight. Look where the Lord has brought me from. Look what the Lord has took me through. Look what the Lord has stood me up on top of. I was in the bottom of the heap, but God put me on the top of the heap. Not for my glory, but that God will get the glory. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I just love what the Holy Ghost do. I just love what the Holy Ghost do. The Holy Ghost got something for each of them. This is why, oh God, let me say this. I, I want to get started, but let me say this. This is why we enter in. When you enter in, you're not just coming. You're not just coming. You are yielding to the presence and the power of God. If you yield to the presence and the power of God, the things you need from God become available to you. Why? Because you have opened yourself up. Yeah. All of what God wants to do in you. Yeah. God wants to, you come in thinking, well, if I can just hear a good song, uh, it'll lift my spirit. But God wants to perform. See, you want God to give you an aspirin, and God wants to perform surgery. Yeah. Yeah. You want God to give you a give you two and see me in the morning. God said, No, no, I want to put you on the table. I want to, I want to put you to sleep. In order for Him to give Adam the good thing, Amen. Yeah. In order for Adam, for Adam to get his good thing. God had to put him to sleep. Amen. He didn't notice that. He just didn't show up. Yeah. God put him to sleep and performed surgery. Some of us exist to sleep. God wants us to put us to sleep. God wants us to slow all the way down. Yeah. We want to get our blessing on the run. I seen some of the runners yesterday. Amen. They was running. Amen. They was grabbing their cups of water and spilling half of it before they could drink any of it. Amen. But they got some in them. See, some of us want God to bless us like that while we run. While we running to and fro, we'll be doing this and that. We want God to give us the only go drive through the ground. But God says, stop, hold up, wait a minute, slow down. I want to put you to sleep for a minute. So I can work my work, my perfect work in you. I don't want to just work a work. I want to work my perfect work. God want to put some of us to sleep. So he can work that perfect work in us and watch what he watch what wonders he has to perform. Oh, he can, oh that's a sermon somewhere, man. Amen. All right, all right. I'm stopping there. Holy Ghost, can I stop for a minute? Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. There is a word. There is another word from the Lord. Amen. You got three. But here's another word from the Lord today. Amen. Coming from Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine. Amen. I, I'm going to invite you to turn, turn your attention to the book of Joshua. Amen. Book of Joshua, um, one, one through nine. Amen. Very familiar portion of the scripture. We found that. Go ahead and help you honor God by standing to your feet. That's the book of Joshua. Amen. Joshua chapter one. Amen. Verses one through nine. And the word of God be. <coughs> now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, and Moses, his minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Verse three. And the place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon uh, that I have given unto you, uh, as I said unto Moses, uh, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, this river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days uh, of thy life. As I as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. 
Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto the unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from, from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whither, whithersoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In verse 9, have I not commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. May the Lord ever have a blessing to the reading of his words, sanctified in our hearts, and therefore making it really good for our souls. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you right now. God, we give you praise. And God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you thanks, God, all for all that you do. God, we thank you, God. And now, God, it is preaching time. God, we pray, God, we pray, we pray, we pray uh, for the type of anointing that will be preaching easy. Uh, God, we pray, God, we pray, we pray uh, for the type of anointing that will make hearing your word easy. God, we pray, we pray, we pray uh, for the type of anointing that will make doing your word uh, real easy. And now, God, we pray, uh, and God, as you dip us down deep uh, into that world of anointing, God, bring us up dripping with that we will be able to preach a word from on high. And God, while you're partnering with us in the power of your anointing, God, we pray that you partner with us in the covering of your covenant. Cover us, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, that the enemy, that the devil will know whose I am and who not to mess with. Her. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Let the household of faith say, Amen. 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 Today for our time together in the Word of God, I just want to continue in the, in, in the series, Increasing the Vision, and preach from this subject, amen, favor, vision, and boldness, amen. Let me say that one more time, uh, favor, vision, and boldness, amen. We're going to get to the boldness part, and we've been talking about vision for a while, uh, but let's talk about that favor for a minute, amen. The phrase divine favor is often spoken of in church uh, with no real explanation, amen, as to what divine favor is uh, and, and just as importantly, what it is not, amen, leading the folks to come up with their own definitions and, and their own even membership plan. Uh, all people of God, there is a plan for God's divine favor, amen, but the plan is God's uh, and the plan is for you to walk in God's favor, uh, share that divine favor with others, uh, and show others how to be in God's favor, amen. We are created, to, amen, to live in God's favor and to take advantage of the opportunity to have God's favor. So what is God's divine favor? Well, it is a blessing granted out of God's goodwill toward you and toward me. It, it's, it's, the, it's just the goodness of God. The providence of God, the anointing of God on your life. It is the peace of God that passes all understanding and the comfort of God. It is the fact that God is so merciful and God is so loving towards you that he wants to clear the way for you to be successful and victorious in everything that you do. What divine favor is not, amen, it is not some monument to be looked at, amen, and to be admired, amen. It is not to be used to promote oneself to some false status, amen, or imagine hierarchy, amen. The favor is to get busy and do the work of the Lord for your life, to do the Lord's will for you. Favor is to see your God-given vision to come to pass. Somebody need to get that. See, the Bible says in Psalms 86 and 15 that the Lord is merciful and he is gracious and full of compassion. Oh, can I tell you today that in the Hebrew translation 
of compassion. That, that, it, that means to be disposed to, to show favors. Amen. That means that God is prone, that God is willing, God is ready, God is able, amen, to show favor unto his people. Huh? And he wants to go out of his way to show favor to the people that are called by his name. Are you called by his name today? Amen. What can I tell you? When you're called by God's name, God will hang in there with his children uh, just for the chance uh, to show them some favor. Amen. Amen. Oh, that ought to be the good news. That ought to be some real good news uh, to somebody in the house today. Can I tell you the phrase, uh, God's divine favor has become one of those church terms uh, that deep people love to trot off. Amen. Uh, I'll almost as to say that, that, that favor is an exclusive property of some, uh, and others have no right to it. Uh, well, but can I tell somebody today that the devil is a liar, amen. Uh, amen. There ought to be, amen, an expectation of divine favor in the life of every believer. Uh, and hold on to this. Uh, where, where, it, where there is a vision from God, uh, you will find the favor of God uh, to get it done. Somebody need to go ahead and praise God right there. And some of us are looking at the vision and don't know. Uh, there are some of us that believe wholeheartedly in the vision that God has shown us, amen, uh, but we still don't know how it's going to come to pass, but we still yet believe it. Uh, but do you know there are other folk, amen, that are listening to you and hearing you proclaiming the vision, amen, see you running around throwing your hands up, uh, praising God for the small beginnings, uh, and they just, mm mm, -mm uh, how they going to get that done? What can I tell you? Uh, the other day, here's a God giving the vision, amen. Uh, there is God giving the Bible. Favor for that vision. Somebody need to go ahead and give God some praise. Amen. In our text today, uh, can I start by showing you uh, the favor in Joshua's life? You, you got to get this. You got to understand uh, how favor comes about, how favor will follow you. Amen. Uh, uh, so we can set this. I'm going to set this word up for you today. In our text, the Bible lets us know that, that after the death of Moses, God shows favor uh, unto Joshua. Mr. Pastor, I don't see that word. Well, this is how he showed it to him. He shows favor unto Joshua because he kept on talking to Joshua. Amen. He began to speak to him just as often as he often did with Moses. That's favor. Uh, to the, the Lord was rekindling, uh, and the Lord was reminding Joshua of the vision of the promised land. Oh, that's favor, y'all. Uh, understand that this time, God did not speak openly always, uh, but Joshua, who was Moses' minister, or he that served Moses, uh, he found favor with God uh, because of his service uh, and his faithfulness. Watch this. Look, can I tell you today that dispensations may change, revelations may come, amen. Revelations might be explained and and confirm different things. And look, uh, this dispensation only means what has been revealed in a divine period of time. But can I tell you, dispensations may change, uh, seasons may change. But the value of serving uh, and the value of being faithful to others uh, and to what God has called you to do, uh, can I tell you today that it never goes out of style. Amen. Uh, see, when you are willing to serve, uh, amen, and show faithfulness, amen, uh, to what God, uh, to what God has put in you. Put, put at your hands to do. Uh, uh, can I tell you, when you're willing to be faithful, then God uh, will transition you uh, to a more favorable position. Come on, somebody. If that, I'm not making up words right now. But to get my point across, amen, I just had to notice that I, I did not say favorable, amen. I, I said just what I meant. I said favor for, amen, for truly, but for, what I truly mean that Joshua was trans, transitioned uh, into a position uh, that was full of more favor uh, than he had previously known. Somebody need to get that. Uh, see, watch this. Uh, see, in that favor for position, uh, he, he needed an increased favor uh, to go along with what? Uh, the increased vision. Somebody need to know. Uh, amen. When God is increasing your vision, amen, uh, God is all also increasing the favor that goes along with that vision. Uh, Isaiah 54 tells us to lengthen our tent sticks, uh, to lengthen the tent cords, uh, because we're going to enlarge our tents. Uh, see, we, we can't enlarge the tents uh, and don't and don't enlarge the tent cords uh, and don't enlarge the tent sticks uh, because the enlarged tent uh, need, a, need a stronger rope uh, and need a stronger stick uh, in order to be able to stand and withstand what's coming against them. Because when you got more, when you got more vision, uh, that means that more enemies coming against you. 
So when your vision increases, guess what else? The favor of God increases. For Joshua, he got more favor of God. Amen. See, look, he needed that in increased vision. See, somebody needs to get this. Joshua uh, had known favor. Uh, Joshua was shown favor. And he was one of the first of the children of Israel to see the promised land hard for himself. Joshua was shown favor along with Caleb. Uh, um, they, they, were, they were the only two of, of his generation and above uh, that were allowed to go into the promised land. Why? Because they believed in what God said. Uh, see, Joshua was shown favor and that when Moses went to talk with God, uh, he stood near back uh, and was able to listen for the voice of God. God looked uh, Joshua had seen uh, and Joshua had experienced favor. But can I tell you now uh, because of faithfulness, now uh, because of serving, uh, Joshua ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Uh, oh, I know we go through favor. I know God does some things for us. I know every now and then we find a piece of change on the ground. Uh, amen. I know every now and then we come past a vending machine uh, and it's still a quarter and a nickel stuck up in there. We, we try right there. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Uh, I know some of us have been to the doctor to get ready to get on the operating room uh, and the hole in your heart that they were looking for. Amen. They couldn't find it. I know. I know. I know, I know you have seen some favor, yeah. but you ain't seen nothing yet, amen. I know you passed on in the pulpit, amen. I got up and finished preaching. I know you went to the hospital with a, a hole in your foot as a diabetic, and the Lord healed the foot, and did that and the infection go to the bone. I know you seen that, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, oh, I'm just here to tell you, uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. But uh, well, the good thing that the Lord has prepared for them that love his appearance. Yeah. But guess what? Uh, you ain't seen the favor that you're going to see because you're increasing your vision. Uh, and when you're increasing your vision, uh, you're going to get more favor, more favor, more favor, and more favor. Come on, come on. Why? Because you're going to need more favor, more favor, more favor. Uh, see, look, uh, with some of the favor we need, we're going to have to go to the bank. We're going to have to stand in front of some bankers, amen. We're going to have to look them square in the eye and say, yeah, we got 55 members that come on a regular basis, amen. We got this amount of time to come in on a regular basis, amen. Amen. What can you do for us? We're going to have to look at them with boldness, amen. We're going to have to look at them in the favor of God. We're going to have to look at them and watch what God do. But we're going to need favor to do that. See, right now, it don't take no favor for us to pay this mortgage. You know why? This mortgage is zero. It's just already paid. So what favor is God going to give us? Look, I'm excited about what God going to do. Because see, because see, in financial circles, uh, being able to borrow money is is kind. It's great. But how about this? How about God give us something else that's not going to pay you for too? I believe that. I believe God can do that. See, I don't know what favor that God's going to give us, but it's going to be more favor than we experience it now. Why? Because the vision has increased. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody, oh, somebody wheels ought to be turning right now. My vision has increased for my family. Oh, it's going to be more favor in my family. My vision has increased for my health. Oh, that's going to be more favor in my health. That's going to be more favor in every area. My finances, my blessing, my stewardship, my, my ability to give. It's going to be more favor in everything I touch. Because my vision has increased. And when my vision has increased, oh God, is, God has commanded and demanded more favor in your life. Come on, somebody. Watch the Look at verse 2 and see the favor. The text say, Arise and go over this Jordan to the land that I give them. You and all these people. How oh, can I tell you today that your favor ought to help somebody else? That's right. right. That's right. Your favor ain't just for you to just grab this, keep them, hold your arms and tighten your arms up, tighten your grip on what you got. Your favor ought to be to help somebody else. See, Moses had favor, but Moses did not get them into the promised land. Amen. Moses never got to the increased vision of the promised land, but Joshua did. And Joshua and his favor for God were about to blow up the spot. Oh, God. And I tell you today that your favor is about to do some things, about to change some things, about to knock down some walls, about to overcome some obstacles, about to climb some mountains, about to cross some seas. Your favor
favor is about the cause. It is about the cause you to do exploits for the Lord. Your favor is about the cause you to do things that you did not think that you were going to be able to do. Your favor is about the cause you to go places you thought you would never see. Amen. And it's not just for you, but it's for you to blaze a trail so somebody else can come on behind you. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to go ahead and get that hair and tell me anointed. Amen. Not just to go for yourself, but to go back and get whosoever will. Come on. Who wants that hair and tell me anointed? Amen. I want somebody to her tubby, amen. See, her tubby had an anointing. She had an anointing. Not only, amen, did she have an ability to go and get folk, uh, but while she was on her pill for drink, uh, sometimes I would say duck left, uh, duck right, uh, step into the water, uh, sink down underneath the water, uh, stay right here for, for a minute. I'll tell you when you come up. See, that her tubby anointing uh, meant that the favor of God was on her, amen, uh, not just to go and come, uh, but to bless her while she was going and coming. Come on, say that. Come on, somebody need to hear that. And see, Joshua and his favor for God. Uh, we're about to say, we're about to go up. It's about, we're about to do some things. Uh, all, all that, that, that the world had never seen. That's how full of favor that Joshua is about to become. In verse 3, uh, we see the, the method uh, of his promised favor. Oh, I love this part right here. In verse 3, the text said, everywhere. Uh, everywhere, not just somewhere, but everywhere. Uh, the soul for your feet shall trade upon have I given you. Uh, watch this. Uh, the favor, uh, oh God, uh, the favor is the result of the promises given you. Come on. Uh, um, that the, let, look, uh, the favor is the, is the result of the promises that are given you. Uh, favor up, undergirds the vision in you. Uh, uh, come on, somebody. Watch this. Uh, you have you have a vision. Amen. In order to get the job done, uh, there are some promises, amen, that are the currency, that are the value behind the vision. Come on. Uh, the promises behind the vision, amen. Uh, uh, it, it is the favor of God that brings through the past in your life. Oh you, oh, oh, you got to get that the word has been spoken. Uh, the word, you wouldn't have the vision that you have unless there was a corresponding word that go along with it. You would not have the vision that you have unless there was a corresponding word that go along with it. If, you're, if there is no word to go along with your vision, then that vision is not God given. It is not God breathed upon. It is not God inspired. Uh, so it won't be, look, it won't be accomplished by God. But when your vision has a word to go along with it, a promise of God, can I tell you, here comes the favor. People say, hold up, hold up. You can't get this without me. <laughs> I'm afraid of the passing. You're like, I'm gonna, look, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. God promised it, but I'm going to make it. Amen. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Uh, see, that, that, that's what the favor does. Favor undergirds your vision. See, somebody need to understand that too many people want, uh, want to stroll through life. Amen. Amen. They want to stroll through, through life, amen. Oh, they want God to do this for them, amen. They want God to do that for them, but they ain't got no sense of urgency about what God is saying, what God is doing. But the favor of God is for an urgency from God. Come on. Because the favor of God makes from the place of strength, amen. Amen. The favor of God makes it possible for you to go through, amen. Not just to go to, amen, but to go through, amen. So if everywhere, if everywhere the souls of my feet touch, God has given it to me, or oh, then I don't want to stroll, I want to run. Right. <laughs> if everywhere God has given me, God said it's mine, I don't want to just lazily walk, amen, strolling along, getting my saunter on. I got a good saunter, y'all. I got you know, I still pimp when I walk. I mean, some of y'all know what that is. Amen. Some of y'all know what that is. Amen. I still do that. Uh, you know, my wife used to bust at me sometimes because sometimes uh, I would find no need to hurry up. We was in the airport one time. Now, I had never really been in the airport in a while. And she was trying to tell me, no people ain't going to wait on you and your cute walking set. So come on here. <laughs> Amen. And I'm whatever. And you know, and then I saw them gates get ready to close. I never know. I never know. Hurry up in my kitty up. Amen. Put a running in my feet. Come on, somebody. Put a running in my feet. And sometimes you got to get a running in your feet when God has given you the opportunity to go ahead. When God has given you the favor to go ahead. When God has given you the promise to go ahead. You are not going to look at God saying that everywhere the soul of your feet touch. I don't want to stroll lazily around. I want to run. Oh my God. It is a part of the increased vision to want to run. Because if everywhere the soul of my feet touch shall be given unto me, that means that means that if I'm running, I can take more territory for the Lord. Come on. Come on, somebody. And watch this. 
And what does Habakkuk 2 and 2 say? It says, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he that seeth it may run. That's what that word said, don't it? Since the devil, when that when the Lord dropped that in my spirit, I'm about to I'm about to tone my pen up. I'm about to tone my study up. I'm like, oh my God, it do say that, don't it? It do say that. Oh God, when the revelation is confirmed, I get more excited about the confirmation than I do the revelation. Amen. I'm not like, Lord, I'm on the right track. We praise God. Oh, uh, don't you think you want to run on in Jesus' name? Come on. <coughs> Verse 4, then by favor, amen, God is given unto Joshua and the people the possession and the ownership of the blessing. In this case, it was the land. That was the vision. Oh, but can I tell you, what do you need to possess with your favor? You see, your faith might not need to possess some land. Oh, what is your vision? Oh, what is your vision for you? What is your vision for your house? What is your vision? What is our vision? We know our vision to have a church with a parking lot. Amen. Amen. That's our collective vision. Oh, but look, but look, it is your promise of God. It is your favor from God. So won't you go ahead and use it? Amen. And then in verse 5, favor is proclaiming Joshua's authority in the land and the power of protection to keep to keep what God, through his favor, has provided. Uh, see, the Lord is saying here, no man can stand against your favor. Come on, somebody. Uh, somebody need to get that. So no man uh, can stand against your favor. Uh, no enemy uh, can stand against your favor. Uh, no devil uh, can stand against your favor. Uh, as it was with Moses, I'll be with you. Let me tell you, uh, I was at work. Uh, I was at work on Friday. Amen. We was in the midst of a tornado drill. Uh, amen. We supposed to be in a certain defined area and one little boy amen ain't want to do the right thing amen and what nobody else said amen so you know who had to say something amen amen folk that was supposed to be watching him was watching their phones playing on the other side of the wall so i had to step into the gap amen young man come back no young man come back no i'm trying to keep you safe young man come back no and i'm gonna tell you i, I, I put my arm around him and gently turn him around Amen, Jimmy, my friend. Amen. I turned him around. Amen. You know, he wanted to buck up against my chest. You know, that, that don't sit well with me. Amen. I'm 61 years old. I ain't used to know nothing you old bucking up against me. What's wrong with you, boy? Amen. But I but I held mine. Amen. But I looked at his eyes and I saw the devil. I'm, 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 I'm exactly. I looked at his eyes and saw the devil. He came at me. Amen. Then he had hit me anywhere, but he went after my surgery to repair eyes. Amen. He went right after me. Amen. But you know, amen. I still get a little quick. Amen. But uh, but he scratched me a little bit. But he won't scratch nobody else. I'm gonna just leave that alone. Amen. <laughs> but I know it was the enemy. Amen. I know it was the enemy that was coming against my favor. Amen. Oh, oh, one way or other, he figured like this. Even. Either he was going to claw my eye, amen, and cause some damage, or he was going to cause me to cause some damage to him. I'm going to tell you, the enemy will come against your favor because on my job, we ain't supposed to touch them, amen. We can hold them, but we can't touch them, touch them, amen. And I thank the Lord because he came out to my surgically prepared eye, and the first thought in my mind was to put him on the ground. But God said something different, and I praise the Lord because the enemy came against me, amen. Not just with the calling of my eye. They say, if I can't get him that way, I'll get him another. But I'm here to tell you, huh, the enemy can't stand against your faith. Huh? I got a little scratch huh, to remind me huh, that God is good. Huh? I got a little scratch to remind me huh, that it could have been all of it. Huh? I got a little scratch to remind me huh, that if I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. Huh? Come on, somebody. Huh? See, the enemy is going to come against you, huh, but he can't come against your favor. Huh? He saw me, huh, and he thought he was going to get me. But what he didn't know, huh, that the favor of God was directed that little claw in the hand of his. Amen. And directed his elbow right underneath my arm. So I had full control. Somebody need to get that. Then he will come against you, but he can't stand against your favor. God is telling you. Joshua, that as I was with Moses, what, what, I will be with you. Oh, what a promise and proclamation of favor. And what is that favor? Uh, what is that favor for? To undergird and the strength of the reality of the vision in you. 
on the favor. Favor is the undercurrent, the strength of the reality of the vision in you. See, I want you to see that today. That God's favor comes with the God-given vision. Amen. You talk about keys to the kingdom. Can I tell you? Joshua served Moses. So Joshua knew firsthand how God was with Moses. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. When God make you a promise that you already seen fulfilled in somebody else. When God make you a promise that you have already received, fulfilled, and somebody else, you see your neighbor healed, and God promised you that he's going to heal you. Uh, you see your neighbor blessed, and see that truth is saved, and God promises you that he's going to save your truth. Yeah. You already know that it can happen, and it will happen under the power and the might and and the mighty works yeah. of God, uh, yeah. and you just get giddy and anticipation and can't wait uh, for the Lord to bring it to pass in your life uh, because you've seen it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen it. You have seen the power of God. And when God tells you, I'm going to do the same for you, but I don't know. Respect the person. I'm going to do the same for you because you have duplicated that spirit. I'm going to do the same for you because you have been faithful and you have been true. You have been serving. I'm going to do the same for you. We ought to get excited about what God, God is going to do. Why? Because, because Joshua has seen it. Just, just like we have seen it. Joshua saw the rod of Moses turn, turn into a snake uh, and then back into a rod. Joshua saw how the Lord prepared the children of Israel through the instructions given to Moses to avoid the death angel plague in Egypt. Joshua saw the crossing of the Red Sea uh, as Moses held out his rod uh, and the waters parted. Joshua saw the manna that came from heaven. Uh, Joshua saw the victories that God had provided under Moses' leadership. Uh, the water that came forth out of the rock uh, as Moses hit the rock or spoke through the rock. Uh, and now the same God uh, was providing Joshua with the same type of paper uh, and the promise that I will not fail thee uh, and I will not forsake thee. Uh, come on somebody, with a word of favor like that, uh, what else could you love me? Uh, some may look at this and say, we have the promises of God. We have the promises of favor. We have the promise of the promise. We don't. What else do I need? <coughs> what else do I need to believe? <coughs> um, in the, and increase vision to see our visions come to pass. Uh, some might say that God uh, is not a man, uh, that he can lie, so it must gonna come to pass. So since we have a word, <coughs> We have a word of favor uh, and the promises, uh, promises of, of God. Uh, therefore, what else uh, do we need? Uh, well, let me help you today. Uh, the results, uh, 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 the results of the promise sometimes uh, do not come immediately uh, after the after the promise of favor. Uh, sometimes the vision will tarry. Uh, the favor of God is real. Uh, the vision will come, amen, to pass. Uh, but church, can I tell you, uh, there's another ingredient uh, to go along with vision uh, and another ingredient to go along with favor. Uh, and it is the holy boldness of God. Uh, it is boldness, uh, a holy boldness. Somebody need to get that. Uh, uh, what is holy boldness? Uh, it is the confidence uh, to take action according to the word. <clears throat> according to the promises uh, and according to the favor of God, uh, according to the vision that, that God has given you, it is the boldness uh, according to who God is. Uh, it is the boldness according to what he has already said uh, and what he has already done. Uh, it is the confidence to know uh, that the Lord has my back in every situation, so therefore I will go forward in Jesus' name. Uh, see, church, uh, <clears throat> I offer you a talk uh, of the favor of God, uh, uh, how we are waiting uh, on the favor of God. Uh, but can I tell you today, uh, according to the word uh, that we already have, uh, we already got favor uh, for our God-given vision. Uh, favor came along with the vision, uh, and the vision increases, so does the favor. But can I tell you, uh, it takes boldness to move in that favor. Amen. It takes boldness, amen, uh, to trust in the truth. Look, uh, Trust in the true promises and turn promises and favor into vision and vision into results. Uh, the only way to act uh, on the sure promises of God uh, is to go is to go all in uh, with boldness. Come on, somebody. Uh, give God some praise. Somebody need to go ahead and say that. Uh, say boldness. Uh, 
Amen. We thank God. Amen. Watch this. Amen. Uh, when your vision, uh, when your vision is cast, uh, and when your vision is expanded, uh, uh, favor is the confirmation uh, and the prelude to you making the next move and uh, faith uh, and your next move. Uh, can I tell you whatever the next move is? Uh, you might can't see it. Uh, you don't see the fruit of it. Uh, you don't see the reasoning behind it. Uh, you don't see it. Uh, you're looking for it, uh, but you can't find it. But you know God. God has promised it. God has said it. God has said that it will be. God has said it. God has said that it's yours. You just got to put one foot in front of the other, even if you don't see it. Boldness. I used to love Star Trek, y'all. Boldly go where no man has ever gone before. This is what he used to say when he would come on. Boldly go where no man. How can you boldly go? Because you know you're prepared. Oh, my God. You got to know you're prepared. You got to know that look, they, they do prepare. Either you got to know you're prepared, or you got to know God is prepared. If you prepare, God prepared you. And if you ain't ready, God shows up he is. You know, there are times when we're not ready. God, I ain't, not, I ain't, I ain't ready. God, I ain't, get on up there. I remember being a little six, seven year old boy. Y'all remember this? We used to have a presentation. I had my presentation. I done went home and studied and learned. I'm, I'm really ready. I'm ready. But then that night, I see all the old saints out there looking at me. I see the people looking at me. I see somebody else going there. They wasn't ready. <laughs> they messed up. And I was like, I ain't going. I ain't ready either. But my grandma said, Boy, you ready. You better get on up. You're not going to You're not going to embarrass me. I know it. It was either, yeah. either, either I go out there and be a stumbling and fall and mess up, or I get back home and get them five foot one inches of fury yeah. that was waiting on me with a switch. Amen. I chose to go out. What, but that's what I found out. That I was prepared. Yeah. And when I boldly went and I stood up with my little chubby self, I had a little, I had a little checkerboard jacket. Yeah, my little fade before the fade was popular. The afro was popular, but my granddad didn't get a fade, followed all that stuff. And I went out there in my little jacket, my little chubby cheeks, and I said my little piece. And everybody looked, everybody was smiling, and you know, and the ham was born. Amen. <laughs> the ham was born right there. That, that was the origin corn right there. That was the origin, the origin of the ham. He was born. They laughed. They smiled in all the right places. They told me I was cute. They pissed my cheek, kissed me on my cheek. The old man gave me some nickels in my pocket. I like money. Amen. I said, come on, y'all. I'm going to do this again. But I was prepared. And when you're prepared and you're willing to step out in boldness, God's going to give you back. He give you back in recompense. When you step out of faith and boldness, God is going to reward you for your boldness. God's going to, and what, what is God going to God's going to reward you with just what he said. God's going to reward you with just what he said. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, that's a good thing. Amen. See, favor is a confirmation. Amen. And the prelude to you making the next move in favor. And your next move is going to take some boldness. Uh, oh, look, suppose you're seeking a better job. And I tell you that somebody based on my relationship with them, uh, somebody out there that has a, a six-figure job waiting on you, uh, if you come and you ask for it, and keep in mind you don't know them, uh, uh, but, but you can have it if you ask for it. It's yours based on what I'm telling you. Now, look, you have the favor with that person to make your vision of a new and better job come true. Church, can I tell you, the vision here is your desire for it for a new and better job. The favor here is the opportunity and the promise of, the, look, uh, look, and the results are the six-figure job. But you don't get the job unless you're bold enough to take the action based on my word. Not me doing it for you, huh? Can I tell you, but based on the word, will you go act for the job? Well, can I tell you, church for Joshua, it was the same way. And we ought to learn from it. Verse 6 says, and God says, the possession of the land is for you. The possession of the land is for you and the people. Because of the favor, because of favor, it will be your right and your inheritance. I promise it is yours. But you must go forth and to manifest the vision in boldness. Because the Lord said it is yours. 
Only be strong and very courageous. That's to be bold, y'all. Verse 7 says uh, that there's only one way to do all that uh, uh, I, that I have promised you to you to do. Uh, there's only one way for your vision to come to pass, uh, uh, for you to have, uh, for you to have, to conquer, to dwell in, uh, to possess, to leave an inheritance for your children uh, and their children's children and so on and so forth. Uh, there is only one way uh, for that word that I gave you, I gave to Moses, uh, and now I, and look, and I gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and now I'm giving to you to come to pass, and that is to be strong and courageous. Amen. Uh, be bold, be bold, be bold. I've already given you the promise. I've already given you the vision. I've already given you the favor, but you can't stand here. You got to cross over that, that joy. You got to go over and verse 8 said, said to meditate on the word. See the book of Deuteronomy. Of Deuteronomy was the word. Amen. Amen. That repeated unto these people who were paused to not only hear the word and to have expectations of the word, uh, but to be bold in the word and see the results of the word. And their vision increased along with God's favor over their lives. And they began to move in boldness. Those others, they did not make it to the promised land. They heard the word in Exodus. They heard the word in Numbers, but they chose to sin against God and not be bold enough to take him at his word and to possess the land. Instead of taking God's word and running with it to utilize God's favor uh, to see their God-given vision come to pass, they deny the power of God's word of favor but not moving in boldness. When you don't move in boldness, when you don't move when God said move, you are denying him. But here, the Lord is saying, and let me help somebody now that you have Come this far by faith, brother. Don't let this word get away from you. Oh, somebody need to get that right. Now that you've come this far by faith, uh, don't let this word get away from you now that you've held on uh, for this long. Uh, don't let this word get away from you. Amen. Don't turn back uh, on the word you believe, you have trusted, you have sought after God, uh, and now God is calling for you to stand on the word. Uh, see, it's one thing to believe the word. Uh, it's one thing to know the word, uh, but will you step out on the word? Uh, see, will you be bold uh, in your application of the word? Uh, will you do what others won't do so you can live like others can't live. Uh, will you do that for the Lord? Uh, will you allow the Lord to work it out in you? Uh, see, God wants to work it out in you. His word is already sure. His promises are already sure. Uh, his favor is uh, his favor. Some say it's not fair, but I say his favor is the first thing in the world uh, because it's to them that believe. Uh, but what are you going to do with it? Amen. Uh, are you going to be bold with all that God has given you? Uh, are you going to be bold enough? Uh, are you going to be fearless enough? Uh, are you going to know that you're protected? Uh, are you going to know that you're anointed? Uh, are you going to know that you're sent? Uh, oh, if you do, uh, if you do, go ahead and go on on that, stand on that word, uh, meditate on that word, uh, believe that word, trust in that word, uh, chew on that word, uh, swallow it like a cow, bring it up again, uh, amen, but hide that word uh, in your heart that you won't sin against God. Uh, can I tell you, you sin against God uh, by not stepping out on God's word. If you can't trust God's word, when God has said, my word won't pass away, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never fail. Come on, so God. In verse 9 of our text said, have I not commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? And have I not commanded thee to be bold? See, last time I checked, amen, disobeying a commandment of God is a sin. Not stepping out of the word and boldness is an affront to God, and there is a price to be paid. You will not receive the promises of God huh, and the vision huh, that you profess will not come to pass. Huh. Can I tell you, huh, it was a whole generation of the children of Israel that missed out on the vision of the promised land of God huh, and God's favor because they refused to be bold, to be strong, and to be courageous. Huh. Don't let that be us. Huh. Increase your vision huh, and be bold. Huh. Come on, somebody. Huh. See, I don't want huh, I don't want the, I don't want our people huh, to be running around huh, 
looking for God to grant me a favor or looking for God to do me a favor, praying to God like you're afraid, like you're afraid to bother him. Amen. See, you have a vision from God. You have the favor from God. And now be bold in God and use it. Amen. Use it. Amen. See, I want us as a church, I want you and me to be a people that know God has given us favor. Amen. To see our vision come to pass. We know we know that and we expect 